Hello, happy Friday, indeed. All right, let's get this all going. Um, hey, hey. Um, hope everybody is doing great today on Friday. Uh, the weekend is about to start. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, I'm L. I am the CEO and co-founder here at Roll. Uh, and today is our first kind of uh, behind the scenes slash showing off uh, Roll app stream. Uh, and uh, thank you all for your patience. I'm not a very experienced streamer. Uh, so I will do my absolute best. But today we are going to be covering the basics uh, of how easy it is to run your first game on roll, how easy it is to set up your first room, uh, and how easy it will be for your players to join that room and dive right into the game with you. Uh, and kind of show off a little bit about what makes our platform special and unique uh, for role players like you. Uh, so uh, without further ado, I'm gonna give a little tour. Uh, we will go through the whole process. Uh, and then if there's time towards the end, we may do a little Q&A with the chat. Um, once again, really appreciate everybody being here. So um, here it is. So this is like your dashboard, or this is your dashboard, when you are logged in to roll. Uh, you will see for now we have a handful of starter rooms for some popular titles, games that people enjoy playing on Roll. Uh, and you'll see our nice little tease here of more games coming soon. Uh, I can promise you there is some very exciting developments coming uh, later this summer in regards to the evolution of this screen you see here and uh, the number of games that you will see. And while you don't have to explicitly play these five titles, you can, you can play anything on Roll. We are very proud of the fact that our system... Our platform is uh, game agnostic, where you can really play any game and create templates and systems for any game. The focus today will be on how to use one of our starter rooms uh, here that we have to get up and running as quickly as possible. Uh, like I said, customization is always a huge component of what we offer here at Roll, so you can play anything beyond these games, but for the sake of getting you started as quickly as possible and giving you the easiest way to start running your next game, we're gonna demo here. Uh, and today we're going to demo using Chrome, which is our in-house title, our, uh, our first published title here at Roll, a fully native digital game uh, that is built right into the Roll platform experience. So uh, let's see here. So if you're coming into the Roll platform, you're a brand new uh, game master and you're thinking to yourself, I'd love to run my next game. And you think, oh yeah, you know, I'd love to run a game of Chrome. So you can go as quickly as starting to play. Uh, it's going to bring you to this nice modal here. You can give your game a name. We're going to call this. Uh, I'm going to call this one "World on Fire," a nice kind of cyberpunk horror sort of game. You can, of course, lock your game behind an optional password if you would so like. Um, we're not going to do that today, but uh, you can think about it very similarly to how you would password lock, uh, you know, a Zoom room or something like that. Um, something very similar there. Uh, so for now, we're going to not lock it. Um, and then it's going to bring you right into the room for the game, uh, and it's going to bring you right to the invite flow, which we have right here. And so uh, you don't have to invite your players right away. Like, let's say, hypothetically, you want to spend some more time prepping, more time checking out the room. You could always, of course, just close this modal out and do that and reopen this later. But if you are just like, yeah, I want to get my players invited. I want them to have a chance to start prepping. You can just click that invite button, and we give you two ways to invite people to the room. We give you this link that if you share it out, you can just click this button and it'll automatically copy it. Um, and when you share it out uh, to your party, to your group, anyone who clicks that link will automatically be brought right to this room. If the room is not password protected, uh, it'll just dump them right in. If it is password protected, it will serve them a prompt first to input a password. But of course, the other fun way you can invite people is via email. You can type into this field here, and you can type as many email addresses as you want, click the send button, and invites will be sent to everyone in your party uh, to invite them to your next game. So this can be really handy as a GM when you're just trying to organize your game. You might send out some invites while you, you know, are busy prepping. Um, so this is what you're going to get when you jump into one of these rooms. Again, this is one of our uh, starter rooms. So it comes pre-populated with a whole bunch of content to make it uh, easy for you to start running your next game. Our goal with these rooms has always been that we want to minimize the amount of required prep a game master has to do. And so in this case, uh, with 
the Chrome room, you have access right here to a bunch of quick links out to sections of the rule book, AKA the rule app. Um, so you have, you know, the core Chrome game here, which is free by the way. So if you are looking to play Chrome, you can come and play Chrome on roll anytime for free. Um, but you can click on this and I can say view privately and it's going to open the rule book right here, which is really, really cool. So now I can actually start prepping, reading the rules. I can navigate around in here. Um, I can say, oh, you know, I want to read up on some character creation and start doing that kind of stuff. Um, but again, this is just if you need access to the rule book. You can, of course, also at any time, you can uh, access that rule book in a new window as well. You do not have to have the rule book take up, you know, the middle of your play screen. If you'd like to have that open in another window or another tab, you can also do that as well. Um, and then each of these in the Chrome room in particular, these are hot links out to specific sections of the rule book. So if you just need to reference the control section or the operator section, you can just jump to each of these. Um, you'll notice that in many of our starter rooms, um, this asset tray is populated with the various materials you would need to run the game. For example, the Merc Borg starter room that we have has a ton of great content based on what is freely available from their site. Um, so if you are looking to run your next adventure or anything like that, you'll find a lot of those materials in the asset tray. Uh, and of course, you can always add your own materials to that asset tray as well with our asset uploader, which is nice and simple and clean, allows you to upload images, allows you to upload maps, allows you to upload PDFs, uh, whatever additional supplementary materials you'd want to use with your group. Um, let's close that out for now though. So let's say again, I'm a game master and I'm thinking, yeah, Chrome is awesome. Um, I'm already familiar a little bit with the rules. I'm ready to start prepping my next session. I really want to just kind of get my party in for their first game. And I don't really want to do a lot of uh, custom adventure writing. I want to just kind of get right into the action. So you can go over here from our start new sheet section over here. And again, for every game room, we try to have a collection of various starter sheets that would be helpful for getting you off the ground. So for here, we might say, all right, I wanna play a game. I wanna run my next adventure with pretty much no prep. So we have a starter mission for Chrome called Crawl. So you can select it from the dropdown and I can say add new sheet. And it's gonna populate my journal here on the left-hand side with that sheet with the Crawl starter adventure. So I have all this great information in here, everything you need to run this adventure right at your fingertips. Uh, again, minimal to no prep on your part. Uh, you can of course add more things to your journal as needed. Up here at the top, you'll see there's a little uh, bar and plus button icon. You can click that plus button and that allows you to keep adding new pages to your journal, new sheets. Um, so let's say, oh, you know, I wanna add, I'm gonna, I'm creating a custom enemy for this. I'm gonna say add an enemy stat block. So now I have my adventure and I also have this enemy stat block sheet, which I can fill in to my heart's content, do whatever I would like. And of course, as a game master, I may want these materials to be hidden from my players. I don't want them to see this stuff. So you can always also click this little three dot uh, icon right here, and you can say make private. And when you toggle that, it's gonna say private next to it right there. And when you toggle it to private, what that means is now only you can see this sheet. The rest of the people at the table will not be able to see this sheet. So if they were to go up here to this little drop down where it says sheets up at the top, and they were to select your name, this sheet would not show up. Your other public sheets would if you had them, um, but this one will not. You can also, of course, pick a sheet and set it as your primary if you would like that sheet to be always at the front of your journal. This can be especially handy for game masters who may be using many, many sheets to run a game. Um, and uh, it can be handy for players who may always want their character sheet to be at the front of their journal. So you can always select, set this as primary and it will move it to the front of your journal. Uh, again, if you have a lot of pages. Um, the last toggle on here that you may want to think about is share with room. So not all games use something like this, but let's say you have a game where you have a sheet that everyone at the table is editing. You know, you might have something that's tracking uh, collaboratively, uh, you know, some sort of way of tracking the adventure itself or progress that the group is making. Um, you could always select share with room. And when you do, what it does is it still keeps it in your journal, but then when somebody selects, well, let me untoggle make private. Um, when someone selects the room tab under the sheets thing up top, it now shows your, your sheet there as well. And this is now editable by everyone in the room, not just you, if you were to do that. Um, so a good example of a place where you might want to do that is you might say, you know, um, in Chrome, 
players, the characters tend to die a lot. The game is tuned for that. So we have an in memoriam sheet. Uh, and we might say, yeah, you know, we want to make sure that everybody has access to this sheet. So we're going to share it with the room. So now whenever a player's character uh, dies in, in action, they can go in and edit this sheet and add that info. Uh, so again, these are all sorts of different ways that you can uh, enjoy that with your group. And again, our goal here is to minimize your prep so you have everything you need right at your fingertips. Now, let's say you do really want to get into prepping and adding additional custom materials beyond that. There's always the custom tab up here at the top of the journal um, where you can pull any sheets from your role library. So these could be custom sheets that you've made yourself. These could be sheets that you've grabbed from a friend. These could be sheets you found on Discord. These could be sheets that you've searched for in our database. Um, they could be for all sorts of things, right? Like I, for example, I have a custom sheet that I use uh, for tracking uh, initiative. Where is that? Let's see here. Let me pull that one up real quick. Um, yeah, my encounter tracker. And so I have this nice encounter tracker um, sheet that I made that is custom to me. It's just something special that I made. I like to use it in a lot of my different games. Um, it helps me track initiative order. I can add multiple turns to it, etc., cetera, et cetera. Um, and so you may find, again, as a GM, that you might have some custom sheets you always like to use for your game. Um, also, when, uh, when jumping around a sheet here, let's see here. Let's go back to, uh, to me, to me as a character here. So when we're talking about our sheets as well, obviously a lot of sheets can have, well, pretty dense lists of information. This could be true for a sheet that is containing an adventure like this. It's certainly true for the character sheets of many complex games. And so this icon up here in the upper left is your table of contents. Look at that. So I can just quickly jump to whatever section I would like. I can say, oh, I want to go here. 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 But here's the really cool thing. So everything about our sheets and journal uh, system is drag and drop. So let's say you've got a really complex sheet with a bunch of information. You've got you know all these different sections. And you think to yourself, this is not the order that I want this information in. This is not the way that I like to digest uh, this information. You could say, you know, the mission brief, for example, now that I've read it to the group or, or, or whatnot, maybe I don't want it over here. You can just grab it, drag it, and move it. And now, all of a sudden, it's in a different section of your sheet. And if you look around, it really is. So if we go up top here, all of a sudden, it's not up top anymore. It is down in the bottom where we moved it. Uh, you can also minimize any sections of the sheet you don't want to see. So you're like, ah, end of mission, mission brief, I don't need to read that right now. Or, you know, I'm only on scene one of this adventure, so I'm going to minimize scene two and minimize scene three so that they are just out of the way so I can easily get to them when I need, and I'm only going to read scene one. So again, everything here is meant to be really easy, collapsible, movable, um, and rearrangeable as at your heart's content uh, so that you can really make your sheets your own. Again, you may find that this is especially helpful for your players with their player character sheets. Um, I know that uh, the goal with, with a lot of groups is to en enable every player to have you know, their materials that are best for their style of play. So you might have everyone at the table, of course, using the same character sheets, the same you know, basic sheets for this game. But you might have one player who likes their information organized one way, another one who likes to organize a different way. So by allowing them to rearrange things with our kind of drag and drop interface here, um, that empowers them to organize their sheet in a fashion that suits them without necessarily breaking the game. Um, so we can close that out here. Uh, let's see here, what else can we show you? Um, of course, uh, paramount to and many role-playing games, most role-playing games, is dice. So up top here, we have a dice roller. Here it is, boom, 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 boom. Um, we have all the different types of dice available. We have D2s, D4s, D6s, all the way to D100s, and we have fate dice. That's what the DF stands for, fate dice. Um, and you can add them to your roller. Uh, you can kind of think of it almost like a slot machine, and then you can roll it, and they roll. If you are playing a game where showing the result uh, total is important, you can click this and it will show the total. But if you are playing a game where the totals are not important, you can hide the total. Um, you can add buffs, so you can say, oh, you know, this has a, a plus five buff. You can say confirm that. Um, you can also add what's called a reference stat. So you can say, you know, we're comparing this against a certain number. So you might have certain games where, if we clear this out real quick, you might have certain games where, 
you say, oh, you have to pass a certain value to succeed. So you say like, oh, you know, the reference here is 35, 34, we'll say 34. And then you'll see that it says 34 verses and then you have all this kind of stuff here. So then you could say, oh, okay, well now it's my turn. I'm gonna roll, you know, a D10 and D20. That's, that's what this, my role is for this, I don't know. And you click roll and you get that and you show it against, oh, nine versus 34. That's definitely a failed roll. Um, so you have all these little ways that you can customize the role. You also have a little private toggle over here that you can toggle on and off um, when you want people to not see your die rolls. This could be especially handy for GMs if you want to do private secret roles. It can be handy for players who are doing secret roles. Um, you can always toggle this on and off. If it is not toggled on, if it is not set to private, which is the default, your roles will show up along the side of the screen over here, so on the, along the left, left hand side, uh, when you roll the dice. So your other other players in your group will see what you've rolled. It will also show up in chat. See, look at that. My rolls are here in chat. Okay, let's minimize that. Oh, and one more thing about the dice roller is uh, when you collapse it, it does not clear your roll. Uh, this is an important distinction right now. Uh, we may evolve this functionality in the future, but uh, right now, uh, we wanted to optimize for players sometimes want to keep the values of their role and it's important to them. So when we close it, it just minimizes it. If you want to clear your role, you got to hit that clear button. Um, so there's, there's that as well. Close that out. Okay. So we have all of that. We have our journal. We have our asset tray. We have our dice. We also have, like I said, text chat. You can chat right in here. Hello. Um, and of course you can DM people as well. Right now there's not um, in this show chat little option down here at the bottom, there's nobody else in this room with me, but if there was, I could select just them and we could DM with one another as well. Um, the other really important thing about this chat is this is where uh, you will find our ping system, which is part of our safety tools integration here at Roll. So player safety is always of paramount importance when running a role playing game. And so the ping system, when you click it, it makes a noise. It also puts that ping graphic in the middle of the screen. It also puts a big ping in chat. Ping is always anonymous. You will never, ever, ever, ever know who clicked it. Um, that is intentional. And it allows people to use, uh, to make an alert in the middle of gameplay based on whatever system you're using. So for example, if you are using an X card sort of system, you might say to your group, okay, in our game, the ping will represent whenever somebody wants to throw an X card. Um, and, and that's important, right? You may, have, you may have other indicators as well, but we have that in there as part of it. Um, and we have a nice little guide for, um, for safety um, up uh, in here. There it is, safety guide. So we have a nice little safety guide here as well. So when you wanna access it, you can click on any of these links. Um, huge thanks to Kiana Shaw and Lauren Bryant Monk for helping us put all of this together. Um, so if you need any additional guides for running safety tools at your table, here they are. Um, we also even have a couple of custom sheets that will help people uh, when they want to load uh, safety tools, such as we have a lines and veils uh, sheet and a stars and wishes sheet. I'll add the stars and wishes one so we can see that. So for example, if you are playing with a stars and wishes system as part of your safety system in the game, you can always have that in there as well. Um, okay, so we have all of that going, but what happens when it's time to play? Let's say we have people in this room and we're ready to play. You can click start room and it's gonna bring you your video systems. Hooray, awesome. Um, and we can say, okay, we would like, uh, oh, I need to give this access to my camera. Um, that makes sense. Give me one second here. Mm -mm -mm. Let me just quickly refresh this because I was using my camera with OBS and that's, uh, well, that's kind of hilarious. There it is, there I am. Um, I can turn my microphone on as well. I'm gonna turn it off for now because of course I'm already talking to all of you. Um, but you can see yourself on camera in the room. Um, again, the functionality is not too different from something you might be used to in a Zoom call or a Discord call. Uh, and so this space here is where all of your players will show up and where you can see each other's smiling faces and enjoy the interaction of role playing together. Here at Roll, we very much cater strongly towards face to face human interactions. We really believe that one of the core fundamental joys of role playing 
is that face-to-face -face human experience, that experience of being able to enjoy a role-playing game and storytell together and look people in the eye and laugh and, and see each other perform. Uh, and so we really tried to build a high-res, high-quality, stable video call experience at the center of the gameplay. Uh, and so this is where you will find that always. You can start the room, you can start the video call with your friends. Um, the other really cool thing we have in addition to that though, is we have now uh, recently launched a screen share functionality. So let's say that you need additional functionality for your game that Roll maybe doesn't offer. Let's say that you think to yourself, you know, a common question that comes up is like, I would like more advanced tactical maps. I would like my game that I'm running requires a more advanced tactical map system than what Roll offers. And so what we would recommend is that you use screen share and you use your favorite tool. Um, we like Owlbear Rodeo. That's one of our personal favorites. If I were to go here, you know. Um, oh, let's see here. There we go, Owlbear Rodeo, load me up. Owlbear Rodeo, here it is, and I could start a game. Um, we don't need to use a password on this for now. Um, and I can move this over into a new window. And then I could say screen share. And I could say, let's use my Owlbear Rodeo window. And all of a sudden, as you can see, I'm now running Owlbear Rodeo right here inside Roll. Um, and I can interact with it back in you know, Owlbear itself. Um, I can do all sorts of fun things here. Uh, I can load up that one of their maps and start playing with my tokens with my friends, that kind of thing. So again, uh, we like Owlbear Rodeo as a, as a mapping system in it to augment Roll, but you could of course feel free to use whatever you would like. And the whole joy of having screen share as an option is that you can add whatever additional gameplay tools you like uh, to the game. Uh, but yeah, like I said, here at Roll, we love Albert Rodeo. We, uh, we love the work they do. We love the simplicity and elegance of their tools. Uh, so we'll turn that screen share off real quick. Um, all right, so we have all that. We have video and audio. We have screen share. We have the sheets and journal over here on the side. We have the dice roller up at the top. Um, we have our asset tray and all the joys of that. Um, let me show you how to upload an additional new asset. So let's say we're going to upload an asset here, right? Um, we'll click on this. Um, and let's say we're going to load this map I've got here. Um, and well, I'm gonna, uh, it could be just an image, but I could also check off that this is actually a map if I would like to. Um, I think for now I'm going to actually not check off that it's a map, but for now I'm just going to upload it as what it is. Um, it's going to go up. Give it a moment to upload. Uh, and now this is in my asset tray as well. You can see that here. Uh, and now when we're playing the game, I can say, oh, you know, I'm going to show this to the party. And now the whole party is going to get to enjoy this map once it finishes loading. There we go. Um, you can zoom in and out. We can move around. We can draw on it. Da 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 smiley face. Um, if we had any tokens uploaded, which currently we don't have any tokens uploaded to this table, but if you did, you could drag those onto the map as well. So again, I know I just showed you all how to use like Albert Rodeo on screen share, but also we do have rudimentary token systems here on Roll. We've intentionally kept our maps and tokens functionality very bare and simple because we really wanted to focus on ease of play. Um, so like I said, if you're looking for something more advanced, we recommend using screen share and combining in your favorite tools. Um, but, um, you can, you can freely also interact with this image just here. Um, I see a question here in the chat. Can all users interact on that screen share in Roll? Uh, when it comes to the video screen share, so like if we're using Albert Rodeo, currently, no. Currently the way it would work is that whoever is screen sharing, the host of the table, usually the game master, um, they are the one controlling things. Uh, if you are looking for something where everyone can interact together, you can of course use uh, this system, which is uploading our images natively to Roll and then people being able to draw on it and move tokens around on it, delete things, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but for now, uh, because the screen share functionality is exactly that, a uh, screen share, uh, you can think of it like when you're presenting in like Zoom or something like that. Um, so let's stop sharing that real quick. Okay, cool. So um, we have all of this. Uh, again, as a game master, uh, if I were setting up my table to play with friends, uh, I functionally would have everything I need already to now run my next game of Chrome, right? I have my starter adventure, Crawl. I have all the info for it. Um, in this case, I know I added a bunch of other stuff here. I've got an enemy stat block for some sort of cool boss monster I might create. 
Um, I've got the In Memoriam sheet prepped and ready for my party if they have any player deaths. I've got my Encounter Tracker. You know, I've got all these great materials. I'm ready. I'm ready to play. I want to invite my friends to the table. Um, so let's talk about what the experience is for your players when they come to the table. So uh, we're going we're gonna to just leave this real quick. Uh, I'm going to go back to the role dashboard and I'm going to show you what happens um, when somebody clicks on an invite link. So as I showed you earlier, you have an invite flow where you can either invite people through email or you can just copy the link directly and just send it right to your play group. When they click on that invite, either in their email or from that link, it's going to do this. It's going to load them into the room and it's going to give them a little bit of information. You know, this is a room that a friend of mine invited me to. So this is, we are joining the, the room called the Yawning Depths of New Los Angeles. Ooh, very exciting. Uh, and then it will tell you here, this room is pre-populated with sheet templates and characters for Chrome. You can also add your own custom sheets and assets after you join. Your player will click join room. It's gonna take a second to load them in. And then it's like, hey, I'm in here. I'm in my room. And as you can see, we have our journal populated just the same way as uh, for the game master. One of the things that is important with us here at Roll is that we don't limit um, the functionality of the journal based on whether you're a player or a game master. So if your players do feel like they are more advanced and want to customize things, they could use the journal that way. Uh, but for your average player, um, especially perhaps a, a more casual or fast uh, game group, they may just come in here and say, I just want to pick a character and get going. I don't even want to go through character gen. I just want to pick somebody and I want to play. Uh, and so we have our pre-gens here. So you might say, oh, let me go look at this one. Who's Paladin? Let me see what they're all about. Oh, cool, okay. Paladin, military heavy. Um, they got their game dude color handheld trinket and a twisted and bent spoon as a patch. And I can read their stats and I can read the various skills they have. And I can see basically all the things about this character. And I can say, yeah, you know, this one looks cool. Maybe I'll play this one. Or I could go back and I could say, hmm, maybe... Let's see what Enoch's all about. Oh, okay, Enoch is a dark cultist, uh, and their trinket is a pouch of human finger bones. That's not messed up. Um, and they have a do not pet patch. Um, I always kind of like playing monstrous characters, so this seems great to me. I'm gonna play Enoch. Now, boom, this sheet is mine. It's already filled out. Uh, functionally, as a player, I'm ready to play. I could just jump right in with you. We could start a video call, you know, as I showed before and we can have our little video modal pop up. And there we go, it popped up correctly this time. Thank you, OBS. Uh, and you can test your settings and you can say save settings. And hey, now we're in the video call. Um, and as you can see, there's another, there's another account in this room, another one of our role accounts. But theoretically, you could have as many people as you'd like and hear all you know, chatting and playing, and we can just start our game. Um, so one of the other really cool things that uh, we are really proud of here at Roll is that as part of our journal system, we have something called a linking system built in, which is meant to make the moment to moment gameplay for your players also as easy as possible. So you'll see here the core stats and you will always be able to know on Roll if something is an interactive gameplay element based on whether or not it has a colored border. So you'll notice that some aspects of the sheet do not, right? These are just text fields that I can edit and just do whatever I'd like with but these have this kind of gradient color border on them. What that signifies is that these are gameplay elements. If I click on these, they're gonna do stuff. Um, they're not just text. So let's say I'm playing a game of Chrome and the GM is like, you turn the corner and you hear a scratching behind a series of rusted metal doors. Uh, the room is dark and the lights are flickering. And I say, well, Enoch is a madman and has absolutely no regard for his own life and is gonna just try to pry open the rusted door to see what's behind it. And the GM says, okay, I'd like you to make a strength check for me. So I'm gonna say, okay, Enoch's gonna roll that strength check. I click on that. Look at that, automatically opened the die roller. And because this strength stat is linked to the correct required die for this game, not only did it load my score of 25 into the die roller as a reference stat, it also loaded a D100 into the roller because you'll see in Chrome, the way that the rules for this game work are that you roll a D100 against your stat and you have to roll below your stat. So having a really low stat of 25, my character is actually quite weak and likely to fail this roll, but let's find out. Oh yeah, 98. So the GM might be like, you get your fingers into the rusted door and you pull with all your might and in a comical display 
uh, you can't even make it budge as you grunt and groan and try to pry the door open. And I say, oh, damn, okay, I missed that. I missed that check. Um, but again, as a player, all I had to do was click strength and it opened the die roller and I click roll and I get my results. There it is, nice and simple. Of course, you can always like edit things and add things. You could, you know, you might have customizations. Um, a GM might, again, say, oh, well, you're rolling with advantage. I might say, oh, I'm rolling with advantage. Okay, let me add another D100 to this roll. Roll that one. Okay, cool. Now I can compare both of these against my reference stat here. So, oh, the 12 actually passed. Okay, glad I rolled with advantage. That kind of stuff. You can also, of course, click each individual one to delete it from the roll, or if you're trying to tweak your roll. Um, you can also click each individual number and re-roll it. You can just keep doing that. Um, so, again, that's all that's all in there. And so what you'll find is that, especially in these pre-gen starter rooms, these rooms that we've tried to create to make it as easy as possible for you to set up and run your next game, all of the gameplay elements are correctly linked to the die roller and to the correct dice that are required for that game. So when you click the correct stat, not only will it load that stat into the die roller the right way, it will also automatically add the right dice that you need. That way the player can just hit the roll button and be on their way um, and see whether or not they pass um, that check or that save that you have asked them to do as a game master. Um, so again, trying to make that as easy as possible for your players. Um, of course, your players also have access to everything in the asset tray, um, just like you do as the game master. Now, let's say you've got assets in the asset tray you don't want them to see. It's just like with the journal and sheets. You can click on something. Um, well, right now, these are ones I didn't add myself. So actually, let's just add one ourselves, and then we can I can show you exactly what this is for. So let's say I add, I'm just gonna add this map asset again. Let's say that I'm in control of this asset. I'm the person who uploaded it. I can click on this and I have it already checked off, make private. When you upload something, it's private by default. So like, again, as a game master, if you're prepping a game or if you're in the middle of a game and you're putting a bunch of imagery up that you might use as a reference for the group, you might have a map you wanna show them. You might have a really cool picture of a monster. Um, you might have all sorts of things you wanna use as visual aids. Um, when you upload them to your asset tray, whether you're the GM or a player, those assets are always private by default, but you can untoggle them and then it will say shared over here. And what that means is now anyone at the table who opens the asset tray can see that there, they can access it. So this is really handy if you have common imagery and common, common assets that you would like your whole table, your whole group to use. Um, everything is just right here, quick, easy to get to. Um, okay, that's... That's essentially the player experience. Like I, like I mentioned, we've, we can go back to the uh, table of contents over here. This is a really long uh, table of contents. So this is a pretty good example of like, I might have a player who says, yeah, you know, I don't need to worry about my cyber tech. So I'm gonna move that below my equipment. Um, or you might have somebody who says, yeah, you know, I want my condition to be above my stats and saves. You know, I have a way I wanna order my sheet. I have ways I wanna do this. I'm gonna minimize this, I'm gonna move this to the top. Again, you can easily rearrange without breaking the sheet, without breaking the information that's organized here. Um, so there's all of that, pardon me. Um, okay, um, yeah, that's basically everything we have here. Uh, I'm going to go back to the dashboard uh, and I'm gonna take a quick pause here. Uh, and if there's anybody in the chat who's got uh, some questions about setting up a game on roll, I'm happy to answer them now. Uh, and uh, if you don't, if, if there aren't any immediately pressing questions, then I will take a little bit of our remaining time and I will show you a little bit of our Sheets and Templates Builder, which is a really cool feature uh, that helps both players and game masters prep custom content for roll. Uh, so I'm looking in the chat. Uh, I don't see any uh, new questions, so I will check back in periodically as we go, but I'm going to just jump into showing you a little bit about sheets and templates. So all of the stuff I just showed you about a starter room, nice and easy. That is your path to the easiest and quickest place to start running your next game on roll. But let's say that that maybe isn't your primary concern. Let's say that you're coming to roll and you think, I actually have a whole bunch of stuff I want to do custom. I am really passionate about the custom stuff I set up for my games. As a game master, I love, like me personally, 
uh, speaking from experience, I run a ton of games and I would say personally, I love customizing and having cool sheets for my specific needs. Like I, like I mentioned earlier in the stream, I have a custom encounter tracker. I have an initiative tracker I use. I have all these standard materials that I've created as a player um, and, as, and as a game master. So if you go up here in the top of your dashboard and you click play materials, this is gonna bring you to your library of materials, which is all sorts of great stuff. This is your sheets, your templates, and your assets. Um, so my sheets are all my sheets in my library. It doesn't matter what room I'm in. These could be character sheets. These could be sheets that I'm using as MGMing. Um, it's all sorts of stuff. My templates are essentially blank sheets. Um, in fact, we are actually likely going to be renaming templates in the near future to blank sheets. Uh, but for now, uh, they are still called templates. And this is where we have this fun thing here, create template. This is the button where the magic is hidden. Click on this, give it a name, roll demo, exclamation point, create. Welcome to the sheet builder. Uh, so this is one of my favorite and coolest power user features on Roll. Um, and I even hesitate to actually say power user because we've designed it to try to be as easy, intuitive, and accessible as possible so that anybody could just jump in and start making their own content. You could make content for your favorite game. Let's say that there's a game you really want to run and you've gone online and you just can't find any really good native digital place to play it, you might be able to create your own sheet here. It could also be instead your own homebrew stuff. Maybe you have a custom hack or your own game you've designed, or maybe you just are running 5e your own way and you want to make a different type of character sheet that reflects the way you play. Um, so let's show you how it's done. Uh, the way that I like to think about it is this is like Squarespace for tabletop games. This is a drag and drop, completely code free, custom editor for you to make your tabletop role playing content however you would like. So. We have two types of elements. We have general elements and we have gameplay elements. As you may recall from earlier in the stream, gameplay elements are elements that are interactive, that do things in the game. General elements are generally things that are text and imagery based. So let's, uh, let's start putting together a sheet for this completely hypothetical made up game. Uh, I'm gonna drag a field in. All right, so now I've got a field here and look at this. Over here on the left, we see live what our sheet will look like. Over here in the middle is the builder, and over here on the right are your elements library. So I've got a field in here now. Um, we're gonna say that this is my name. So this is gonna be your character's name. And I'm gonna say, you know, I think that the character name, I want it to be a full width field. So now I've got this nice field here for a character name. And then I might say, okay, well, you know, this one's gonna be their level. This one's gonna be, um, I'll move this one over here. There we go. This one's gonna be uh, their XP. Um, and so now we've got your name, your level, your XP. And then I think to myself, hmm, as I'm looking at this, maybe XP should go before level. I'm just gonna drag that over. Look, rearrange, nice and easy. Um, and I'm gonna say, okay, well now for this, I'm gonna add a little nice divider because I like it for formatting reasons. I like a nice little visual break. Um, and then I'm gonna add a note section. And this note section is gonna be like my background I don't know this I'm just I'm just coming up with this on the fly um, but again maybe this is a note section where a person can write a short bio about their character who knows again it's up to you it's up to the game that you're playing and the, and the content you were trying to create um, and then you say okay maybe that's my first section I'm gonna, I'm gonna rename this first section to uh, character info um, you know or something like that um, and then we're gonna say okay we're gonna add a new section this next section is gonna be my stats Boom, new section, stats. And now we go into some gameplay elements and we think, okay, in this game, the stats in this game are essentially dice buffs. This is, again, completely hypothetical. So uh, we'll say this is a game where your stats add to a die roll. So we're gonna drop this buff gameplay element in. Oh, look at that, that's cool. Um, and we're gonna give this a name. So this is gonna be my strength stat. Um, and I can even add a little description underneath it. Uh, use this for lifting, breaking, and pushing things. Um, and you, know, you can fill this out exactly how you'd like. And also similar to here, you can of course make it uh, half width or full width. Um, but we're gonna make it half because we're gonna have other stats that we wanna have in here. So we're gonna put a few more in. So we're gonna put another buff in here. Uh, put a few more buffs in here. 
and let's say again, like in this, you know, we might have speed, intellect, um, I don't know, charisma, um, something like that, right? You might have all these different, and again, you can move them around, you can switch the order, um, and you can even give them default values. Now, again, like for many games, you might have, you know, these values might just be blank, right? You might just say, oh, you know, zero, 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 because once a person starts to fill out the sheet, then they'll fill in the stats. But you might have a game where you want this sheet to have a pre-filled in value. So you can just do that here as well. You can say, yeah, we're gonna make this one start at five, and this one's gonna start at four, and one, et cetera, et cetera. You can also do negative numbers, that kind of stuff, right? Um, and so now I've got some stats in here. Um, just to show you real quick without any sort of like logic to it, but we have a bunch of different gameplay elements. So the buff gameplay element does exactly what it sounds like. It adds to the final result of a die roll, so it buffs the die roll. Um, we have a similar version of that called a field and buff, which is essentially an editable text field with the buff next to it. This is for if you are trying to create some sort of custom editable stat, you know, or a stat that needs additional context information. Um, we can just uh, quickly delete that one. Uh, we also have clocks. People love clocks. Uh, clocks are exactly what they sound like. You can pick how many pie slices it has up to a maximum of 12. Uh, you can pre-select which pie slices are filled in, which ones are not, that kind of thing. Uh, we have what we call a point counter, which is this. You can count things up and down. And what's really fun is you can use it as health bar. So we can do this. We can click on uh, this little gear. See this little gear toggle here? This gives us advanced options. Um, a lot of these different gameplay elements have advanced options. These are here for if you really want to get really custom. So you can get in here with the advanced options and I could say, let me add a max. Oh, look at that. Now it has a bar because this is like a health bar. And we'll say, you know, maybe 100 and 100. And if I click down, the health bar goes down. Very exciting. Um, I'll close that real quick. Uh, and so we have we have a point counter. We have something we call a pool, uh, which is a dice pool. And so you can select which types of dice it rolls. We'll say d10s. And how many? We'll say four. Because um, there are certain games that have mechanics where you need to roll a big bundle of dice that are related to a specific action or a specific stat. These are great for, for example, weapons. Like there are games that have weapons where it's like this weapon rolls four D10s. So you might have a dice pool gameplay element that has that. Now here in the builder, we're editing it and we're setting it up. When somebody's actually playing and they click on this gameplay element, it will open the die roller and put four D10s in the roller for them so that they can then just roll and immediately do the action. Super great. Um, we also have a reference stat. So this is one you've already seen because this is the one that we use in Chrome. A reference stat is exactly what it sounds like. It is a number that exists separate from the rolled die result that you compare the result against. Now, different games have different uses for reference stats, right? In Chrome, a reference stat is a number that you are trying to roll under. So you say, okay, I have my reference stat up on one side and I have the die roll that comes up here and I'm trying to roll under. Other games might have reference stats that are like a maximum number of dice that you can roll. So it might be one of those things where like my reference stat is four and I need to, as I'm adding up and putting things in my die roll, I need to make sure I don't go over that number, things like that. You never know. There are all sorts of reasons why you might want to have a reference stat. Um, and then the very last one we have is something called a slot. Um, and so what this does, we can scroll down here, you can see it here on the bottom of the sheet. So what a slot does is it gives you these little slots that you can toggle on and off. So dink, 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 see? You can turn individual ones on and off. You can create as many of them as you'd like. They start to form like a little grid as you make more of them. You can see them here. You can fill in different ones. Uh, we created this type of element, um, especially handy for games that have things like tracking in D&D. &D. Your death saves, right? You might have, let's say, three slots for my death saves, right? And so as a player is failing their death saves, they're checking these off, that kind of thing. Um, so we have all of these different types of gameplay elements. And like I said, the way that you always know that something is an interactive gameplay element on roll is if it has color. Uh, if it is 
like this, if it's without color, then it is mostly an editable text field. You can also, of course, do super fun stuff like you can add images to your sheet. So you can do this and you can say, I'm gonna add an image. Um, in this case, I'm just gonna add this cool like roll kind of graphic, um, but give it a second to load in. And there it is, there's an image on my sheet. It's not a really, in this case, not really a very exciting image because it's just a roll background graphic. But let's say again that you're building a custom sheet where you wanna have cool imagery that's related to the sheet. Maybe you're building a sheet for a custom adventure and you wanna have images that are related to the adventure in here, or you're building a sheet for players to create their characters and you wanna have cool imagery for the different sections of the sheet to represent different aspects of the character. Um, there's all sorts of fun ways you can use that to spruce up your sheet. So you can keep customizing to your heart's content. Um, you can, of course, just like when you're in the game, you can rearrange your sections. Uh, you can also throw things into groups, which is really cool. So you could add a group. Now you can see how there's this little thing here. And I can say, I'm gonna move these inside this group. Now these are inside the group. And I can even give the group um, like uh, the ability to be duplicated. So what a group does is one, it allows you to collapse it um, when you're playing, not while you're editing, but basically while you're playing the game, you can click on this little eye icon and it will collapse this down and minimize it. So players can minimize groups within a section. It also adds this little grab thing and you can then move them around. So as a player, if I have a bunch of groups in the section, I can rearrange them within. And like I said, if you go into the advanced tab and turn on duplication, this is really cool. It allows people to make more. So see where that add button is? So when you hover over a group and click add as a player, let's say you're using this sheet live in a game, it will duplicate this exact group um, in the default state and it will create a new one below. Um, and by, by default state, what I mean is whatever state you have it in when you publish it here from the editor. So for example, um, what's a good use for this? A good use would be, let's say I have a new section and we're gonna call this inventory and I'm gonna say you know what's really annoying about playing role-playing games with huge inventories the really annoying part is having a sheet where there's just a huge empty piece of list text where I can just write a hundred items in wouldn't it be great if instead I just had a field that was the name of the item and a note that was the description of the item and we'll make this full with and we'll move this up, there we go. So we have the name and the description. And then if I just put them inside of a group, put them inside of a group like this, and then whenever I want to, I can just say add duplication. And now there's just one to start. And whenever somebody needs to add a new inventory item, they can just click the add button and it will duplicate this and make another one and another one and another one. And they can just keep adding inventory items as they need rather than have a big, huge, empty section waiting for text. So um, that's all that stuff we have there. Um, and then, like I mentioned, we have all of these gameplay elements and we have a linking system. Uh, there is some advanced linking that you can get into if you really wanna play around. I'm not gonna get into that too much today because we are almost at time, but I will just show you where it is if you wanna play with it yourself. So with gameplay elements like these and you click the cog, you'll see that there is an add link button. You can click that button and you can pick from all sorts of things that you have on your sheet and link to them. Um, and what that will essentially do is link those elements together so that when one of them is clicked, they both get clicked or they both get activated. Um, there's a huge potential of really cool complex uh, gameplay automation that you can build in using the linking system. Uh, but like I said, not gonna get into that in too much detail today because we could do literally a whole stream just about creating automation and links and things like that. So I'm just gonna let you know that this is where it is if you want to go looking for it. Um, I have not even shown all of the features for uh, building a sheet in Roll, but I wanted to just show you enough to kind of give you the tour and get you started. Um, again, we think about this kind of like, it's like a square space, but for role-playing games, it's like a drag and drop, easy interface for creating sheets for any game you'd like. And when you are ready to share your sheet with the world, you can click publish. Now I'm not gonna publish this one right now because it's a mess, um, but hypothetically we could just click publish and you'll notice here also, we can set it to be public. Now, when you publish a sheet on roll by default, it will be public. Um, you can always untoggle that and what that means is if, if you untoggle it, the sheet will still get published, but it will be visible only to you and anyone that you manually share it with, like if you give somebody a share link for it. But by default, sheets are public. 
So when we go back to my cheat templates here, um, this is what I mean by manually sharing. There is a share button here with a link. So if you create a really cool custom sheet and you want to share it with your party, you can click that share button and you can take this link and you can share it out with your party, share it out with your friends, share it out with your group of, of, uh, of fellow game creators. But of course, something else that we added recently that's really cool is when you publish a sheet and if it is public, it's going to show up in search. So let's say search. Uh, my favorite role playing game is Numenera. So when I type Numenera into the search up top, it shows me all of the various sheets published by people across the entire platform uh, that have to do with Numenera. So we have a lot of really cool stuff in here, some of which I've made. Some of these are mine, some of these are not. Some of these are from other interesting people. Um, we have a Numenera one in German. Let's go look at that one, that's cool. Oh, so neat, yeah, it's all been translated into German. This is great for our German players. Um, we can go back to our search results. Uh, we have this one, Numenera skills edit. This is somebody who probably took this, this sheet and rearranged it um, for how they prefer their skills to go. Um, so again, the search feature is really, really great for all of that. Um, and the other uh, thing that's nice about being able to search custom sheets is, I'm gonna go back to my play materials, go back to my templates. Any templates that I've saved in my account, so let's say like the D&D one, for example, Let's say you want to create a really cool, is Star Trek Adventures in the list yet? <laughs> Hello, John. Uh, let's find out. I just type in Star Trek and see what happens. Joe, I am excited to tell you that somebody has made Star Trek Adventures sheets. Look at that. Boom, boom, boom. You have Mr. Ecock to thank for that. Uh, so, yeah. There they are. Uh, now that I have said that name out loud, I don't feel good about it. Uh, but you know, there it is. They do exist. Uh, yeah, great. Okay, so going back to play materials and templates. So you can go in here and like I said, let's say you want to create a new, um, a new sheet, but you're like, I don't wanna make one from scratch, right? Maybe you, for example, as a uh, GM are running your own custom 5e game and you wanna modify the existing D&D 5e. You can just say duplicate on the sheet. And when you say duplicate, oh, is it not gonna let me do that while I'm a, uh... oh no, it worked, yeah, sorry. Uh, because of OBS, some of the overlays were not showing up for me. But when you click du duplicate, it puts a copy, you can see, because it puts the word copy, in your created list, which means you can edit these. Um, and so you can now go in here and you can say, oh great, okay, here is the full D&D &D sheet. And I can edit it, I can do whatever I want with this, I can delete these, I can move them around, I can tweak them to my heart's content, I can rename it, and then I can publish it and I can save it as mine. So what's great about that is, like I said, you might have your own custom way that you wanna run your game uh, and that you may want to create custom sheets for it. You may want to do a hack or a mod of your favorite game. Um, you may have somebody who built a sheet that you like, but you're like, it's not quite right. I want to tweak the formatting a little bit here or there. Um, and so you can do that again by just duplicating a sheet that you found via search and then doing your own edits in here. And what's nice about that is those edits um, are yours. That will be saved to your account as part of your sheet now. Um, they will not affect the original creator and, and their original sheet. They still have theirs as well. Um, and so, uh, yeah, we're pretty much at the end of time. Uh, and so I'm going to wrap that up for today. Um, I hope that was really insightful for everyone. Uh, thank you so much for being here with us. Uh, I'm going to just quickly just jump right back into our room here so that you can all see my face um, so I can say goodbye to everybody. Um, save and hello um all right so uh thank you all again for being here thank you and i hope that uh i hope that this helps you get started uh running your next game on roll as i said we strive to be the easiest place to start running your next game uh, whether that be through our preset starter rooms for some popular titles or whether it be you putting together your own room and using our powerful template creator uh, to do that 
Um, and so I really appreciate you all being here. Uh, this video will also be saved to our, uh, our VODs uh, and we will do an edit of it for YouTube as well. So please, if you missed the stream or if you're a friend who missed the stream and are looking for this information later, um, please know they can come back and see this information anytime. Uh, and I look forward to doing this again with you all sometime. So uh, thank you and uh, have, a good, uh, have a good rest of your evening. Bye.